the discriminant. What is it and what is it even good for? And so what it is, is it's the part of the quadratic formula that's located underneath the radical sign. So it's the b squared minus 4ac. What it's used for is to describe the number of solutions and if they are real or complex. Now remember, solutions are the same things as x-intercepts. So um, we can use it to tell if the real roots are rational, like the square root of 4 comes out to be 2, or if they're irrational, where we would need to get a decimal approximation. This is useful because it lets you know if a quadratic is factorable. If it is a rational square root, then it means that we could have factored it instead of using the quadratic formula. So, how do we use it? We need to think of two very important things from the quadratic formula. The discriminant is what's under the radical sign. So if we think about it in terms of the square root, we can figure out if it's real or an imaginary solution. And remember that there's a plus and minus in front of the square root sign. This is going to make sense when we ask what is the number of roots. So if the discriminant is greater than zero, means that the discriminant is positive, the quadratic has two real roots. For example, if you had x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of 9, what you're going to do is you're going to have the plus 3 version of the answer, and you're going to also have the minus 3 version of the answer. That's why it has two real roots. When the discriminant is equal to 0, that means that 0 is living underneath the square root sign. And the square root of 0 is 0. So the quadratic has one real root. And think about it. If you have x equals negative b plus or minus 0, when you add the zero or you subtract the zero, it's going to be the same one single answer. And lastly, when d is less than zero, when it is negative, back in algebra one, we would say the quadratic has no real roots. Because if you have plus or minus the square root of like negative four, we can't actually take that square root and get a real solution. So this means that we have no real roots. It means we have no x intercepts, okay? It doesn't mean we can't get an answer because we're going to learn about how to take the square root of a negative number in this chapter. So let's check out what that does for us graphically. It translates to graphs by telling us um, how many x-intercepts we have. So the roots are the same as the x-intercepts. And in the calculator, calculator they re are referred to as zeros. If you have a super old school TI-82, which is like a dinosaur, they will be referred to as roots. That's why it's important to know that all three of these things are synonyms. Now, when d is greater than zero, when our discriminant is positive, we have two roots. So we should have a parabola that crosses the x-axis twice. It can be right side up or upside down. When d is equal to 0, we're having the square root of 0. We only want to touch it once. So the vertex is on the x-axis. So you only intersect once. And lastly, when d is less than 0, when it's negative, it means that our picture is going to have no x-intercepts. It doesn't mean we can't graph it if it has no solution. And we just have it, it's floating above or maybe if it opens down, it's floating underneath the, the x-axis. So, using only the discriminant, just using b squared minus 4ac, you are to try and match these quadratics to their graphs. We have one that crosses twice. This one is technically supposed to be crossing once. Let's see if we can, if I can scooch it down enough that it uh, doesn't want to match up. There it is. Um, oh no, don't delete all of it. Um, a little bit of a hot mess here, ladies. 
you want to have it just cross once. And lastly, you have one that doesn't cross at all. So what you want to do is you want to try and figure out and match those. And then lastly, you want to use the discriminant to describe the number and type of solutions. And if we have a real solution, are the x-intercepts rational or, ir or irrational? So let's do one of these together. Let's do this first one. We've got b squared minus 4ac. So it's good to know who a, b, and c are. So a is 7, b is negative 8, c is 9. So we're going to do b squared, that's 64, minus 4, a times c is 63. 64 minus this ginormous number, which I don't even need to find, is going to make for a negative discriminant. This has no real solution or no x-intercepts. So you try the 5x squared minus 12x minus 9, and remember, if you get a square root that is a perfect square, then remember, that equals a rational number. And we'll check back with you for these answers on Monday. Good luck this weekend.